Thank you for tuning in to the God Only Encouraging Message and Prayer Series. Messages from the Heart of God to draw you near to the throne of grace, confidently and boldly, knowing that God welcomes you into his presence, knowing that he has mercy for your failures, and f- that you will find grace in his presence to help you in good time for every need that appropriate help that you need in every situation and circumstance. God gives you well-timed help coming just when you need it, just as he says in Hebrews four sixteen. Today we're talking about trusting in God and doing good and feeding on his faithfulness. God does not want you worrying about what's going on in the world around you. God is in absolute control. He has ordered every one of your steps. He has written all your days in your his book, even before you're born. God knows what's going to happen before you. He knows what's happened in the past. He knows how it all works together. You don't need to worry or be concerned because God is on your side and he is for you. And if you know he's for you, then you also know that God is watching over you. You're not your own. You're a child of the living God. And God himself watches over you. He's your father. And you're his child. He's the good shepherd. And you're his sheep. He's the one who watches over you. And he carries you in his arms when you don't have enough strength to walk yourself. And when you look back in the beach and you see those one set of footprints, it's his footprints carrying you in those rough places of life. God never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He never abandons you. He will not, he will not in any way relax his hold on you. No one can snatch you out of his hand. God is for you. And he wants you to know that he paid a great price to give you that opportunity and that privilege to receive him. He's the one who stirs your most holy emotions and your mind to come toward him through Christ Jesus. He's the one that sends his Holy Spirit to get you motivated, to just give you divine persuasion where you want to find out things about God. I remember years ago studying Dr. Blackaby's book on experiencing God. And one of the points there was that when you hear people asking questions that only God can answer, when you hear people asking questions that are questions that God needs to answer, that's your opportunity to come alongside them and to let the Holy Spirit guide you into what you should do in helping them to understand the questions that they're asking and even help them find the direction they're looking for and finding what God would have them to do. God loves you. Because he loves you, he's done some incredible things for you. And one of those incredible things that he's done for you is he's given you his word. And David especially, in his older age, he wrote Psalms 37. And it's one of the most foundational psalms to give you a practical manual for life discovery, you know, to help you align your life with God's plans and shows you how to live joyfully and not being concerned and worried about all the things that are going around you in the world. Psalms 37 is a very powerful and a practical manual for life. Within its just first eight verses are rich insights for finding joy and ridding yourself of worry and negative thinking. God doesn't want you thinking that. He doesn't want you worrying. He never said, please worry. He said, trust in him. Lean not to your own understanding. When you worry, you're leaning on your own understanding. You're on leaning on your own uh, estimation of what the situations and circumstances are. God says, don't do it. You are very finite. You don't know all the things and the multi-sided wisdom that God has in approaching all things and how he works all things together. So trust him who works all things together for your good to sit there and bring you through in every situation and circumstance, making you the victor and not the victim. Because he says in Romans 8, he says, you're more than a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. Well, think about it. Jesus Christ lives in you, and he conquered sin, death, and the grave. 
No power could hold him in the grave. And that power is at work in you. And he himself is living in you. And the power that raised him from the dead, the very Holy Spirit of God himself is living in you and has sealed you as God's own. And nobody can break that seal. He starts off in this psalm. He says, don't worry about the wicked or envy those who seem to be doing wrong and prospering. He says, don't worry about it. I have this under control. He says, remember, the grass grows, but it soon fades away. And like spring water and spring flowers, they wither. The Bible says, beloved, do not forget this one thing. With the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some people think of him as being slack because he hasn't gotten after that person. No, the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So his patience with people is knowing all the things that are influencing them. He knows when the enemy is coming against them. He knows what's causing them to have the intention of their heart. He knows what's causing them to do the wrong or not to do the right thing. He knows all these things, and he knows who's motivating it. He knows what's causing the problem. And he sees in the invisible realm what you can't see. He knows what you can't know. So trust him. He reminds you that all flesh... All mankind is like the grass, and his glory will fade like the flower. The grass withers, and the flower drops off its petals. But the word of God, Christ himself, who lives in you, he never fades. And he's who gives you the divine instruction. He's who gives you the good news. He's the one that endures forever. And his word is good news to you because it will come to pass just as he says it will. So he tells you in Psalms 37, verse 3, he says, trust in the Lord. That means to rely on him and to be confident in him. And then he gives you this command and do good. Don't be swayed by people. If somebody treats you ugly, you treat them good. It's not because they deserve it, because they don't. It's because you are the representative of God himself. You're not your own. You're an ambassador of Christ. You're a personal representative of the household of God. And you're not your own. You don't get to speak for yourself. You get to speak for God. God says, I love these people who are unlovable. I loved you when you were unlovable. And I want you to love others who are unlovable so that you can show and shine my light on their life and it'll show them their flaws. And then you're there to support them in coming to know me. I have you there to help them and to be my helper in the situation, along with the helper, the Holy Spirit himself. God is looking into all the details of the life rather than being upset and angry about the wicked or the things that you think are wicked it's far better to look beyond the present circumstances by trusting in god and continuing to do good he says in philippians 2 10 he says you're his workmanship recreated in christ jesus to do the good works which god prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. Why wouldn't you think that God would prepare these good works and want to do good things through you? He did them through Christ, and you're a Christian, a little Christ. You're a little anointed one, and he's doing his same works through you that he did through Jesus. And he actually says in John 14, in verse 13, he says, and I'm even doing greater works than these because I live in you, and now I'm seated at the right hand of the Father. And God's word will not return to you void, but it will accomplish the things in which it's been sent to do. That's what he promises. He says to you that God doesn't forget. He doesn't forget. 
you can trust in him and he will help you have the, the very desires to both want to will and to do his good pleasure. It's Christ in you who gives you the strength and the ability by the grace that he provides for you, which is sufficient to make you able to handle each situation and circumstances so that you can know how you should answer every person so that your words will be with grace, seasoned with salt, and that you would know how you ought to respond and how you ought to act toward people because he acts as umpire in your heart with his very peace, that peace that surpasses all understanding, that guards your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And that's what you act on. That's what you do. He says it this way. He says in Proverbs 3, 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. He will direct your path. God is directing your path. When you trust in him and you come to him, that's you showing your reliance upon him. And when you show your reliance upon him, then you see where he's moving in your life. He's moving all the time, but you don't see him all the time, and you get discouraged. And the reason you get discouraged is because you've been distracted from what God would have you focus on so that you can see him working around you. So when you get your focus on God and you do this one thing, you put God first. That means you seek him first before you start your day. You seek him first in everything. And then you're going to see him working around you that you didn't see before, but he's been there all the time. Listen, when you trust in the Lord, as he says, it reminds me of Jeremiah seventeen, seven through 8. He says, most blessed is the man who believes in. That means that you who trust in and you rely on the Lord God. When your hope and your confidence is in the Lord, you're like a tree planted by waters that spread out its roots by the river. And it shall not see and fear when heat comes because its leaves will be green. Why? It's because it's planted next to the water. It's not anxious and it's not full of care, if even if there's a year of drought, because it continues to unceasingly yield its fruit. That's an example of you. Your body is filled with the very spirit of the living God. And in you are flowing rivers of living water out of you, which is the Holy Spirit living in you and flowing through you these living waters. Christ himself is the word that you speak. He's the word of God that became flesh, and now he lives in you. God the Father takes great delight in you. And he says so in Psalms 37, 4. He says, I take delight in you because you delight in me. What happens is that you see God. When you delight in God, When you're thankful for God and you praise God, then you see God in a way you haven't seen him before. It's very similar to going up and down the highway. And you may have a a blue car. You haven't seen anybody with blue cars before when you got the car. But then when you get on the highway, you start seeing a lot of people with that same blue car that you have. It's not because they weren't there. It's because until you had your eyes focused on that blue car that's yours, you didn't notice the other blue cars. Well, that's the way it is with God. Until you get your focus on praying to God and see him answer prayers, well, you don't see him answering prayers around you. Until you focus on Jesus and make him the Lord and the Savior of your life, and trusting in Him. You don't see Him working around you. You don't see Him working in you because you're not looking for Him. That's the distraction of the enemy. He tells you in Psalms 37.5 that the first thing you should do is commit everything to the Lord. Why? Because when you do, He tells you in verse 34 that He gives you the desires and the secret petitions of your heart when you commit those things to him. He tells you, roll all your cares 
That means hand each care that you may have that you're taking as a load to yourself that you don't know how to handle and you don't know what the outcome is going to be. You just put it into God's hands. If you're literally sitting here with me, I would hand you uh, a, a, a cooking utensil or a fork or a knife. And I would hand it to you, and you would take it because you need it to eat the meal that I've prepared for you. But if you don't take it, then I'm not going to let you eat with your fingers because I want you eating with a fork. And I've provided the fork. But you may not know how to use the fork because nobody trained you how to use the fork. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't use the fork. It means you need training. And that's what he tells you. That's what he says. You need to have your mind renewed. You need to have your mind trained to see God working around you and to expect God working around you because he always is. God is always working around you. The counsel that God gives you is to trust him and he will help you. That's it. He says, I will bring it to pass. That's Psalms 37, 5. The counsel here is very simply. God, rely on him to carry your burdens. Don't carry them yourself. The word way, when he, Jesus says, I'm the way, when God says, I make a way, he's telling you that the way that you do that is by rolling all your cares upon him. Because God is the way, the truth, and the life. That's who Jesus said he was. And he can most easily burden your problems and your, carry your difficulties and help you in every situation and circumstance of life. You can rely on God to do whatever it takes to help you in life. Because he is. And when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God... He exalts you, and he tells you, point blank. He doesn't say, keep all your cares to yourself. He says, cast all your cares on me because I care for you. And that's what he expects you to do. What's the promise here? He says that if you cast your cares, your worries, your anxieties, and your difficulties on him, he will sustain you. And he will never allow you to be moved. That's his promise in Psalms 55, 22. And then he goes further and he says in verse 6 of chapter 37 of Psalms, he says, And he will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. It just simply means that he's going to radiate his light on you. And you're going to radiate with the very light of God. Just like a noonday sun, that means that the justice that you're looking for, God's providing. He's the one who sits there and helps you. He's the one who guides you in the way you should go. And then he tells you, be still. In Psalms 37, 7, he says, be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about these evil people who prosper. And don't fret about their wicked schemes. He makes it a very strong commandment. Be still and rest in the Lord. That means to wait for him and to wait for him patiently, depending upon God to answer you. Don't fret because somebody that's prospering in the way and you can't figure out how God can allow that. You need to pray, Lord, Lead me not into temptation and keep me far away from evil, harm, and disaster, and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of the Son of God. For greater are you who is in me than he who is in the world. That's what you're asking God. So stop being angry about the situations of the world and turn from your rage. Don't lose your temper over things that are temporal. Be kind and courageous and depend on God to give you those qualities of kindness and courageous. He literally wants you to cease from any type of anger and he wants you to forsake any type of wrath for he is your God and he loves you. Then he reminds you in Psalms 
37, 1 through 9. The wicked will be destroyed. But those who trust in the Lord with all their heart and all their might and all that is within them, to you he gives eternal life. The psalmist says that he loves you and that he watches over you and he guides you and that his patience for you is greater than you can imagine. So to summarize, the Lord himself says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. That's Ephesians. He tells you to do good. Life is about choices. Knowing that God will honor you when you do the right thing gives you the motivation to make the right choices. God wants you to know that you're special in his sight. And he's going to do greater than you can even think, hope, ask, or imagine for you. Then he tells you, delight yourself in the Lord. In other words, fall in love with Jesus. Tell Jesus how much you love him, how much you care for him. Take time every day to sit quietly in his presence and just learn to delight in him. I just thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Then, Father, I ask that you help us to commit all our ways to you, that we just trust in you with all our heart. We lean not to our understanding, but every day of our lives, we are able to handle it the best because you are the best that's handling it for us. And we thank you for it. So we are still before the Lord. We're the ones who don't try to figure it out on our own because God already has the answers. So it's better to go to him who has the answers than to try and get the answers. He says in verse 7 that be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Now, this doesn't mean that you're going to be patient without the patience of God making you patient. You can be patient knowing that having done all to stand, you're standing. And you're doing so in the power of the very Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead. And that same mighty powers that work in you and for you, helping you even this day. God loves you. And he wants the absolute best for you. When you turn to God and you look for him, he's going to do greater than you can even think, hope, ask, or imagine. Now, as we've gone over these eight verses... I just want to thank you for listening. And then I want to remind you, don't worry about anything. Remember, God's in control of all things. And just as the grass fades away and the spring flowers start to wither, God's word will not return into him void. So I just thank you, Father God, that your word states that we don't forget this one thing that you are with us and you're guiding us and you're helping us in all the affairs of life. We are still before you, and we thank you, Father God, that you are alive and active in us and with us and through us, and that you, Father God, advise us on what to do on a moment-by-moment, day-by-day basis, and we thank you for it. I just thank you, Father God. For those who don't know the Lord Jesus, we like to give you a chance to accept him as your Savior. So we just ask in the name of Jesus that you, Father God, would help those who are listening and would help their families and that you reconcile them with the love and the comfort that you give us so that we can give it to others. Now to you who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can even ask, think, Oprah, Matt, to you be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever in Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus came and he has given you his life. He's given you his mind. He's given you his presence. And that means that you're more than a conqueror. You're literally the child of the living God who he loves and makes you the victory in every situation and circumstance of life. Trust God and leave the victory to him. He will show himself faithful and help you in all the affairs of life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.